This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, more specifically an updated World Chalice deck profile video for the November 2017 format post the Cybers Link Structure deck. Now, I put out a list that was updated as most as I could, you know, get it right before the ban list was dropped, so rip me. Uh, but so I had a lot of people that were clamoring all over my, you know, social media messages and my uh, YouTube comments asking for an updated list, and I basically was spending some time testing some lists around, basically just trying to make sure I didn't just vomit out trash to you like some other people might be willing to do. I, I want to test decks that I put out to make sure they're at least somewhat viable and somewhat, you know, good, you know? Uh, so if it takes time for these things, then don't worry. It's probably on my agenda to do, but I'm just trying to make sure I give you the best product that I could probably give you. But anyway, so what we have access to now out of the Cybers and Link Structure deck and the new format is that we've lost some copies of GoFu, some things have changed around in the format, and the Cybers and Link Structure deck has given us, most importantly, Trigate Wizard to play around with. Trigate Wizard being a form of extra deck negation that we can summon during our normal Link spamming plays, and basically replacing Cyber Dragon Infinity in my previous build. While it does require a little bit more of a resource investment to get into Trigate Wizard, it doesn't require any specific resources to go into it, so it's a little bit better for you overall than the Cyber Dragon Infinity plays that I was making in my previous build are, and it is still something that you can summon for just, you know, negation of key cards, key power cards going second like Raigeki, or evenly matched and stuff like that. So, what we have here is we have a 40 card list, and it starts out with 28 monsters, and starting that out is 3 Lee the World Chalice Fairy. This is pretty standard, I'd hope. <laughs> Followed by 3 World Legacy World Chalice. If you're not maxing out on these cards, I'm not sure what your particular agenda is for trying to play this deck. Because um, basically, these cards are like what give you the most extension to your plays. Because of Lee basically being 2 monsters, World Legacy World Chalice being another 2 monsters after you link away with it. There's just, there's way too much good that these cards provide that, like, if you're not playing the absolute maximum number of, con like, quantity of cards that you can be playing out of these cards, then... <coughs> God, I'm sick. Um, then I don't know what your real, uh, what your real, like, achieve... What you're really trying to achieve, I guess I should say, uh, out of, like, not playing these cards. But then carrying on... Uh, the rest of the World Chalice monsters in my main deck are two Chosen by the World Chalice and two World Chalice Guard Dragons, uh, making ten World Chalice monsters in the main. I originally was going to cut Chosen, uh, but it's it really benefits you nowadays because of Trigate Wizard and stuff like that to, uh, to play more of the World Chalice names, but not too many of them because they are essentially bricks. Uh, Chosen is the only one that I would really consider playing in terms of the vanillas right now, um, considering the deck choices I have access to because you have access to a card like Emergency Teleport to summon it out of your deck, making it essentially a card that can be special summoned as a starter card. So there's that to consider. But uh, I wouldn't play Beckend. I definitely wouldn't play Crowns. I'm not playing Beckend because I'm not playing Baguska in my extra deck. There's like two or three cards in my extra deck that I want to make room for before I even begin to think about putting Baguska into my extra deck, because honestly, there's a bunch of like things that it can do already where it doesn't really have to rely on Baguska. Number one... And number two, like, the amount of play that you have to put into uh, making, like, Trigate Wizard plus Firewalls plus a Baguska is actually just insane. Like, the amount of resources that it requires is, like, legitimately, like, five-card combo hands. Uh, and so that's just not something that I'm willing to, like, invest my time or effort into doing. I'd rather just play something like Chosen, which is better because it has access to E-Tele, which is an extender at any point during your combo strings. Uh, and honestly, just having more copies of World Chalice cards in the main in a reasonable amount gives you better overall freeform plays especially further on into your combos and also allows you to you know dodge things like ash blossom and ghost ogre with your ningirsu draws and with your um and with your uh, world legacy world chalice summons because of the fact that your link monsters can be used to trigger later on the chain and then summon these cards out of your hand if you did draw into them so they're just they're extenders and so i mean barring the fact that this is vanilla uh, it's just, it seemed worth it to up the count to 10 from my previous 8, uh, where I was trying to, like, test the deck with an even more slimmed down World Chalice, uh, like, lineup. Like, it was just one Guard Dragon and then the three Lees and three World Legacy World Chalices and no other cards. Uh, but then I found out that, like, there was, like, this happy medium of running these sorts of cards, and that number is somewhere between 8 to 10, as far as what I've been aware of, what I've been able to find. Uh, but carrying on to the non-World Chalice portion of the deck, three copies of the Agent of Creation Venus, 
and then three copies of Mystical Shine Ball to be summoned off of her. Now, this is a card that's very interesting to me, because for some reason, people just don't want to run this fucking card. I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't get it. It's one card that you summon that's heavily supported by the rest of your deck, that heavily supports the rest of your deck, that for the cost of 1,500 life points gives you access to three extra monsters on your field. Now, it does require you to run Shine Balls in your deck, but those are fine to draw as well because of how your deck is structured with things like Link Spider or whatever, or even if you draw the Shine Balls, if you had a way to Venus, which your deck is very, you know, catered towards getting to, you can summon it out of your hand anyway, so it wasn't even a brick then. I can understand people not wanting to run this card in their World Chalice deck if it was some, like, ludicrously expensive card that was really hard to access for the average player, but these cards are literally, like, 25-cent commons or something like that. Like, you can get all six of these cards for, like, five to seven dollars at the very, like, easiest, like, it, very easy. It's so simple. I don't quite understand. Uh, like, I hear, I see people that just, like, I guess we just don't want to, like, look at math. People tell me, like, oh, if you open Venus plus two Shine Balls or Venus plus three Shine Balls, that sucks. Well, let's not ignore the fact that if you open Venus plus three Shine Balls, there's literally a tenth of a percent chance for you to draw that combination of cards, one, and then two, Venus plus two Shine Balls is e e equally as, like, non, uh, non, uh, non-existent at 3.64%. So, the only thing you're really going to realistically see is Venus plus maybe one Shine Ball most of the time, and even that is fine. But even Venus plus three Shine Balls, if we're going to go down that route, if you open Venus plus three Shine Balls in hand, and then your last card was any form of Extender, like Exodius or World Legacy World Chalice, that is still fine, because you'll summon Venus, summon all three of those Shine Balls out of your hand, you'll do your World Legacy World Chalice play, or you'll do your Exodius play, and you're still going to draw three cards off Ningirsu, no matter which one you had. So you're going to replace those three Shine Balls with three draws in your hand. So, like, I, I don't understand. I, I, ha I have people that comment on my videos, and they're like, what would you replace for Venus? The answer is nothing. As long as I'm able to play Venus, I'm going to play Venus. Damn it. But anyway, enough getting heated. One black wing go for the Vague Shadow. I'm still playing this because it is still a good starter. It gives you two extra cards. That's good for link summoning, link spamming, all that sort of stuff. Um, I considered cutting it when it went to one, but I mean, hey, now I'm never going to see multiples, so I guess that's kind of cool. Um, the chances of me drawing it post combo off Ningirsu are also equally low. Um, so like, it's just a card that's worth it to play. Like you, you want cards that extend your special summoning ceiling, hence playing the Venus. Uh, so like cutting Gofu just because it's at one doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, and so like if you draw it, you draw it. You had it. Cool, great. Uh, there's still a lot of combos that work with like Gofu plus World Legacy World Chalice. Um, so like it's, it's something that I would still play 100%. Uh, and then three copies of Exodius, the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. This card is like your recycler, uh, rip and peace Digusto Emerald. Uh, but even with Digusto in the Emerald in the format, if it was still legal, I would still probably be playing this card as well because this card is just so insane in terms of what it allows you to do for, one, your short game, and two, your long game. For your short game, it allows you to do a bunch of insane things with Venus uh, by letting you pay again to some of the Shine Balls again. Uh, it resets all of your Link resources, so you're not really hard-coded into what's in your extra deck anymore every time you have Exodius, uh, but then also it functions as like sort of a masterpiece out because you can put, you know, your Shine Balls in Grave, you can put your Chosen in Grave, this thing can get up to 4 to 5k, this thing can close out games really quickly by itself uh, in that regard if you leave it on the board, uh, but also it's just a free special summon extender in a lot of other combos, so like it's definitely a card that I 100% like advocate playing 3 of because it makes every single combo where you're able to put monsters in Grave better just by existing because it's a free special summon, but... Carrying on, the last, like, I guess, real monster in the deck is one Gym Knight Lazuli to be my brilliant fusion target. And then moving on from there, we have a bunch of hand traps. Not that many, though, compared to the previous build. One Max C, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and then two Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbits. I'm only doing uh, these six hand traps. Um, if I was going to up the deck size from 40 to maybe, like, 41 or 42, it would be for another Ghost Ogre and then, like, another spell, uh, like, I don't know, something like, something just more of a power spell or maybe another Kaiju. I don't know. Uh, but so from this this seems to be working fine for me like honestly ghost ogre is really good right now But it's not the best um, In terms of like against spiral if you ghost ogre their double helix they'll still search sleeper uh, And then they'll just drop sleeper um, and like it's still kind of bad for you, but at least it's better uh, <laughs> um, But ash blossom is always good and maxi is also good So there's no real reason not to be playing them in a deck where you have access to them uh, but then the last monster in the main deck is one Gamma Seal, the Sea Turtle Kaiju. This card is simply here for the Kyoto Waterfronts. I'm not playing any other Kaijus in the main, it's just this. 
uh, to reinforce my going first uh, strategies because if you draw into the Kyoto waterfront, you can just search this. Um, and then, like, you get to summon this with your firewall next to your trigates, get multiple negates, and stuff like that. So, I don't know if it's going to make keep its way in the build for much longer because there are some days when I really like it, and there are some days when I really hate it, and just wish it was like three evenly matched or something uh, instead of the two Kyotos and the one Gamma Seal. But honestly, it's it's doing enough work going first as of right now. Uh, like, it's just it makes it really a little bit easier to side deck because there's already Kaiju in the main, so like you can side like two other Kaijus and interrupt a Kaiju Slumber. Uh, against problematic matchups, so I mean, I guess it's kind of cool for that. Speaking of which, uh, for the spells, starting out we have two Kyoto Waterfronts, I'm not playing any Terraformings or anything like that, I wanted the Kaiju Engine to be pretty small in case I do lose the die roll and go second, so it is literally just these three cards, the one Gamma Seal and the two Kyotos. Um, you still have a decent enough chance to draw this card, but even if you don't, it doesn't really matter, again, because Trigate Wizard is in the extra deck, uh, so nothing, nothing really too... Uh, like heavy to worry about there in terms of uh, problematic things. If you draw it, you draw it. If you don't, I mean, you're still probably doing some Trigate Wizard plays, so there's that to consider. But carrying on, three copies of Brilliant Fusion. Uh, I don't think I would play this deck without Brilliant Fusion, like, ever, uh, honestly. Like, it just seems like one of those cards that just extends your play by so much by giving you access to Lee a lot more of the time than you would normally see her. And then the Foolish to be basically just like, a worse Brilliant Fusion. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's better and worse in certain uh, capacities. Uh, sometimes if I have this, like, post Ninjirsu and I didn't have, like, an Exodius, um, or if I want another Exodius, I'll, like, Foolish Burial Exodius, and then make my Firewall Dragon, add my Exodius to hand, then summon it, and then do another Venus play to, like, extend the play further. Or sometimes I'll use this to search hand traps. Sometimes I'll use Brilliant Fusion to search hand traps, because there's Ghost Ogre in this deck. Uh, so, like, if I already had Lee plus Venus in hand, and I open Brilliant Fusion as well... You can play Brilliant Fusion Ascending Ghost Ogre to Graveyard because that's a light. And then add it back to your hand all Firewall Dragon mid-combo while you're getting other combo pieces. So things work out pretty well in your advantage for that uh, in that regard. But carrying on, three copies of Transmodify. Uh, the ultimate better have it card <laughs> to your opponent. If your opponent doesn't have Ash, you're probably going to get them. Uh, but if they do have Ash, then rip in peace. This is a card that I upped to three with Gofu being gone because we really needed more ways to see Venus to, uh, to special summon more. Uh, so honestly, it's just it's a card that it could fluctuate back down to two, but honestly, I've been liking it a lot at three right now. It's it's kind of odd. Um, your opponent going second uh, with their five card hand against you going first only has like a 33.4 percent chance of opening Ash Blossom. Uh, so like you you have so many different ways to make this card live because you've got the Brilliant Fusions to send Lee to add Lee back with her own effect. You've got the Lee herself. You've got the Foolish to add Lee. Uh, by sending it to Grave and adding it back by discarding a monster. And then you also have the uh, Mystical Shine Balls in the deck that you could summon and then transmodify out for Venus. It's not going to be as good of a Venus, but it's still a Venus is putting two other monsters on the board with the other two Shine Balls left in deck. So this card is enabled by 10 cards out of your deck. Uh, it's a solid 10 cards out of your deck. And then the Venus itself is another card. So, like, I'm just I'm trying to increase my chances to see Venus as much as possible. If my opponent has Ash, then I guess I just got fucked. But it's like. Is this is one of those decks that's it's a rogue deck, but it's a very powerful rogue deck. So you've got to maximize your chances to like really, really like play the game very, very fast and very well in whatever areas you can, especially with the loss of Gofoom. But carrying on, we got some one ofs. We got Soul Charge. We got Emergency Teleport to go with the Chosen's, and we've got Raigeki just to be the uh, the last roundout card. Like uh, you could swap this for um, for uh, like another Kaiju, or you could swap it for the third Ghost Ogre, or hell, you could swap it for like another. Um, Another World Chalice monster, uh, honestly. Uh, but I really like it as Raigeki because a lot of times Masterpiece comes out on Trap Monster when I play against it. And so having Raigeki as a possible board wipe going second or just as a card to play against Masterpiece is pretty good. But, so what we have now is we have the extra deck, which is 15 cards, obviously, or else I'm doing something wrong. Starting out with three copies of Imdok the World Chalice Dragon because it's necessary in a lot of combos, actually. And then two copies of Link Spider. Uh, making Trigate Wizard, um, I really find the, like, the second Link Spider something that, uh, to be something that I really like want a lot of the times. Uh, but that goes away as soon as you start putting Exodius into the combo sequences, so I don't know. This second Link Spider is kind of a flexible spot. Um, it's easily the 15th card in the extra deck, honestly. Uh, because you can get away with one Link Spider, uh, but the second one I find, you know, I want to make it a lot of the time. But at the same time, it could easily be something like a, uh, like a Boralode Dragon or a Decode Talker to just be like another card that could potentially out Masterpieces and things like that. Uh, so... Not too sure, but as of right now, I've been liking it as the second Link Spider. But just know that that's a flexible spot. 
Uh, but then going on to the Link 2s, we have Proxy Dragon, we have two Eve the World Chalice Priestesses, one Orum the World Chalice Blade Master, the boy Trigate Wizard, and then uh, one Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior, and one Guy Saber the Lightning Shadow. Um, for the uh, for the really really cool like soul charge plays like that's base the soul charge the soul charge plays and the like exodius plays are what this really gets a lot of use out of uh, but I guess this would be like the 14th spot in the extra deck this is like a flexible spot as well uh, but I do like every play where this thing comes up every play where this comes up it's absolutely like game ending uh, because of the fact that it's a card that can go and point down uh, so like that's that's the thing to consider two copies of firewall dragon. And then the one Gym Knight, Seraph Knight. Now, Firewall Dragon is one of those cards that I probably wouldn't play this deck without either. Um, I say that, but, like, Firewall Dragon makes the deck very good at, like, continuing its combo reach. Uh, whereas, if you are not playing Firewall Dragons, you can sort of play a budgeted version of this deck now. Because of Trigate Wizard existing, and, like, Trigate Wizard can sort of replace Firewall Dragon in the in like the way that you're trying to extra link and shit so if you want to see a like a more budget oriented deck profile like as a challenge from me it's still going to include venus you best believe uh, <laughs> i'm definitely it's probably something that i would probably like to handle so if you guys want to see a budget world chalice deck profile um then definitely let me know in the comments down below but anyway if i were playing this deck at any sort of like competitive event like regionals or higher or whatever definitely would not play it without brilliant fusions or without firewall dragons like the card just does way too much um the card just does infinite amounts of stuff for uh, for this deck as well as uh just as disruption as combo pieces it's literally like an all-around like the best card in the extra deck and i'm not even like making that up in any way shape or form but anyway that is the deck uh let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below if you have any questions comments or concerns and definitely Feel free to ask away, and I will answer to the best of my abilities, and I will try to dial back the sass that I usually come off as having in the comment sections of my videos. Usually I'm not actually trying to be sassy or trying to be a dick in any way, shape, or form. I just have a very, very direct and short way of communicating with people, and that usually just ends up coming out as me being an asshole, uh, which is something that I've learned to live with uh, ever since high school, but unfortunately... When you're not, you know, talking and you don't have the, uh, the uh, benefit of being emotive with your speech patterns or saying things staggered in certain ways or, you know, talking with your hands and shit, things start to easily lose context and you just sound like an asshole. So, as uh, things I need to deal with in my life. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As I've already said, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. And check out the links in the description of my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as the reward tiers can get some things back to you as rewards, like entry into monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! giveaways or access to my private Discord server. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, you have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.